Hello. Is technology stealing our focus? The author Johanna Harry reflects on this in his book Stolen Focus. Why can't you pay attention? I came across this when he was interviewed on Five Live. He talks about his and his family's journey and how he noticed social media was stealing their attention. Let's take some moments to reflect on this and if this means anything to us in our lives. I will stop and breathe in your presence Just breathe Just breathe Johan starts by talking about the effects that constantly being on his phone had had on his and his family's life. Not showing up or being present in your own life at the fear of missing out on social media, spending time engrossed in technology, often not even knowing the benefits, and seeing that you may be missing out, but also not being able to stop. One time when this had been drawn to my personal attention was when I went to a Lumineers concert with my sister. At one point in the concert, they left the stage and set up to do a small acoustic set in the middle of the audience. It was fantastic especially for us as we ended up being right next to them in the audience. When they were doing this, as you can expect, most people were getting their phones out to record what was happening. But this was not the purpose of them leaving the stage. They had left the stage to be closer to their audience, to connect with them, much like what we talked about over Advent, what Jesus did at Christmas. The members of the Lumineers kept saying, put your cameras away, put your phones away, simply be present in the moment, connect and enjoy the here and now. Don't miss it. This is often something we forget to do, thinking we should save these memories. But do we forget to live them? Do we end up missing something? Johan goes on in his reflections. When you sit down to get some work done and it gets to the difficult part, am I going to sit here with my pain and distress or flick through TikTok? Which is easier? Losing my ability to be present. Our phones can be a great distraction when things are difficult. We've all done it, haven't we? Waiting for something, in a waiting room meeting a friend before they arrive, it's far easier to turn to your phone, social media, than to be social. But then again, that might just be the introvert inside me. Since listening to the interview, and perhaps before, I have become increasingly aware of the amount of time lost to scrolling through mindless short posts from people I don't really know and have no intention of getting to know about golf shots, making something, some silly prank, or something equally not really important. In his interview, Johan mentioned an app that he uses that blocks certain apps from opening at certain points in the day to purposely stop being distracted and automatically going to your social media app of choice. Now, most of the apps he suggested you have to pay for, and being tight, I went on the search for something free. So I've been using this app called ScreenZen, an app created by Scott Harvey, He created this app as a side project to help people build a balanced relationship with their phones by making small changes with a positive mindset. The app is free, so why not visit their website, screenzen.co, to see how the app can help you and why not give it a try. When you download the app, it also has a very easy to follow tutorial about how to set the app up to work for you. So now every time I open Instagram, instead of the app opening, I have to wait five seconds to decide if I really want to scroll mindlessly through random things. And it's quite nice really, because alternatively, I found myself saying a quick five second prayer to ask God to bless and use my time on social media for his glory. We love this app at the online core as it really resonates with the podcast, giving us time to pause with God, even a short burst. The app helps us focus on our mission as well to build communities on social media, to build deeper relationships with people and spread the good news of the gospel, rather than, like I said, mindlessly scrolling through random stuff with no intention of communicating or being social. We pray for Scott and his mission. And thank you, Lord, that you've put the vision on his heart to make a difference in people's lives. Amen. And just for ease, I'll add a link in the description of this episode. Remember, it's free. What people sometimes forget is that the human brain can only do a few things at the same time, and the common mistake we all make is that we think we can do several. For example, looking at several social medias and working at the same time. But what this really does is change our concentration. 
Even just stopping for 10 seconds to read a text, you then need to reconcentrate on what you were doing, losing time to read the text and also to reconcentrate. Attention and productivity generally improves when we do one thing at a time. Johan shares how he spent a long time away from social media, technology and the internet and shares about the benefits and awakening this had on him. But he also shares total abstinence from the social media and screen time may not be the answer. It seems that these things are now ingrained into society and impossible to get away from. Maybe we need a more holistic approach. Yes, we can do more personal things to be more present in our lives, but also band together and help each other. He says, For so long, I've received the thin, insistent signals of the web every few hours throughout the day. The trickle of likes and comments that say, I see you, you matter, now they are gone. Simone de Beauvoir said that when she became an atheist, it felt like the world had fallen silent. Losing the web felt like that. Now, I don't know his religious views, but when I read this, I couldn't help but think, I know someone who says these things to me, someone who knows me and loves me and created me with so much potential and purpose. I feel there are so many more directions I could go from this article, but I'll just leave you with this. Why don't you try joining me to use social media less in a self-serving manner, less in a way to receive confirmation from others, to live more in the moment and regain attention on what matters to try and fill social media with God's love, saying, God sees you. He says you matter. He says you are loved. You are worthy and you are welcome in his presence and in his church. Lord, help us to know we are enough and loved by you. Take away the pull to need gratification from the internet and technologies. Help us to see the people we love, care for them and be present with them. Make time for them and show them how special they are. And as we do this, May we feel the same. May this world be refreshed and may our attentions be restored. Restored to the passion you have given us and restored to fully focus on you, your plan and your love. Forgive us where we have failed before. You have every failure and likewise every victory. Every victory and all the good times we give back to you in thanks. Every victory is yours and we want to spread your kingdom far and wide to see your kingdom here with us. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Just the sum of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I am Because I need to know
Taking all I have and now I'm laying it at your feet You'll have every failure, God You'll have every victory 